Hello YouTube, uh, Sammy Techno here. And today we are going to calibrate this TX C3RX. Yeah, this is a really good deck. It's one of my favorite decks. This has been my deck from the beginning. Yeah, this, is, this was a Christmas present from my wife way back in 1984. Yeah, I've had this deck and I will never sell it because it has sentimental value as well as quality. This sucker is built like a tank, yeah. And it is just, uh, yeah, it, it's gone through one belt already. It turned to mush, so I had to replace the belt. But yeah, this thing is still top notch in condition otherwise. And uh, today we're gonna calibrate it, okay? We're gonna calibrate it to this uh, uh, Maxell tape, all right? And I want to apologize in advance for any weird camera handling because I'm handling this with my left hand rather than my right hand. So yeah, just uh, forgive me for that, please. So anyway, what you need to do with this C3RX to calibrate it is you need a tone generator. You know, it uh, the, some of the decks now, they have their tone generators built into them, like say the Pioneer CTF 1250 that I've done videos on. That one has its own tone generator and, and the uh, Harman Kardon CD491 has its own tone generator and the Tascam 122 Mark III has its own tone generator. They're all built in, but the TAC does not have a built-in tone generator and one of the accessories that you could get when you buy the when you bought this deck back in the day was a tone generator and I'm gonna throw up a picture of it there okay and you, you're probably gonna ask say hey tech how you gonna how you gonna calibrate this without a tone generator if you don't have a tone generator built in well you know there's ways around it and if you're watching this on the internet then you have a tone generator at your disposal and I'm going to show you the web page that is the tone generator that I used to make this video okay so what I did is I went to this web page and I picked out two tones that I need for this deck I picked out a 400 Hertz and a 10 kilohertz and I downloaded it and I put it into my SoundForge and I made it into a file I'm going to show you the file I made and the front is the 400 hertz and the end is the 10 kilohertz and what i did i paid copied and pasted copied and pasted i made it like two minutes long okay and i turned it into an sd card and now it's playing on this little mp3 player i built right and that's going directly into the inside of the deck okay and now what you do is you preliminary setup for the record calibration of this deck you got to set it up to do it right and what you do is you set it to source okay source and noise reduction is out okay get a little closer uh, line in because it's a line in input uh, it's a CRO2 type tape so you put it to EQ for that and the bias is also set for CRO2 type tape okay and this little red light here this is for adjust because we're going to be adjusting the bias and the calibration record levels okay so what what you're going to hear in the background here what you hear right there that is the test tone that i recorded that's coming off of this little player right here and it sounds like it's only one test tone and then quiet but that quiet spot is the 10 kilohertz you can't hear that very well it's very very high very high frequency so uh, yeah what you do is you put it into source and then you have this setting here called test okay this is for the test tone that you're going to be using and the test tone is usually run at about minus 20 decibels okay because you don't want to peg out the meters and tape you know run the tape into saturation that's what would happen if you ran it at too high of a level. So they want you to make the adjustments at around minus 20, minus 15 dB. So anyway, nothing's happening here. You can hear the tone, but nothing's happening. You don't see any meter activity. And that's because it's not in record yet. So I'm going to put it into record. Okay, it's in record mode now. And now I'm going to put it into the test mode. Switch it to test. And watch what happens to the meters. Kaboom! 
they went straight up there man yeah they are straight up there because now what that test switch did is it increased the sensitivity of the input by about 20 decibels okay and what you can see is the meters are steady they're both showing 0 dB I got them got them set to 0 dB and even though you can't hear that 10 kilohertz tone it's registering on the needle because it's there it's there man it's a signal so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that signal to calibrate the tape okay and we're gonna put it in tape into motion put the roll roll tape roll tape I just hit the play button so now we're rolling tape is rolling I don't know if you can see it in there it's rolling okay now we're still on source so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it to tape now okay and there tape and right now it's calibrated okay I've got it calibrated for the tape you, what you do is you switch between tape and source and the meters are supposed to be the same and they are but to calibrate it you go down to these little dials here now for the bias what you do for the bias is you want to make so it shows level at both the needle doesn't change and what I've done is I've taken it off the bias setting and you see one tone is one needle deflection and the other tone is the other needle deflection and that means it's off bias so you want it to be both the same just like the one on the on the right side so you tweak it and tweak it and tweak it and there just just by chance I think I got it right there and is it going a uh, little high okay I think I got it right there yeah I think we're good oops well that was the end of the that's when it recycled back okay yeah I think we got it I think we got it okay all right that's good that's good enough right there and now for the level you just want to make the levels so that they're the same so see I can adjust that down adjust it up and I'm gonna leave it right there at the 0 DB so right there and any fluctuations you're seeing are probably due to the tape being old this is like a 30 year old tape okay so you're seeing some fluctuations there that would I would uh, say that's the tape being funky and old but uh, yeah I was uh, when I was trying to calibrate this before I was getting some uh, deviations on the needles on the uh, on the adjustments here and it was making the needles go like this every time I try to adjust it so that told me that there was some dirt into the potentiometers so I had to uh, get inside and I'm gonna show what I did to get there I had to spray it with some cleaner here some contact cleaner so to do that I'm gonna cut to that scene and we're gonna watch it now right down in there are the potentiometers that I needed to spray with some contact cleaner because they were giving me fits when I tried to tweak them so I cleaned them up I sprayed some contact cleaner and they're basically only accessible from the bottom once you remove this panel from the bottom of the deck then you can gain access to them and uh, yeah it was uh, I first took the top off and I thought I'd be able to get to them but no and then I remembered, hey, there's screws on the bottom, and you can open up the bottom. So, yeah, I had to do that, and that's where we are at this point. And, um, yeah, then we're going to go back to the other part of the video. And now we're back from that. Okay, so, yeah, this deck is completely calibrated. And what you heard on the previous video was me recording a song by Deep Purple, and it was playing back on this exact tape right here. So anyway, I wanted to show you how to calibrate it and how it's done. So don't forget to take it out of test mode because you jam the meter straight up if you do. <laughs> they, they don't like that extra sensitivity. So anyway, Hammy Technoid says, see you later.
Mm-hmm.